Well, friends, it's a beautiful, beautiful morning here at the lawn at Christ Covenant Church. We're so glad that you have joined us for worship on the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. It's September 12th today. And once again, we're so glad that you've joined us for worship. Uh, beautiful, beautiful day, as I said. And uh, welcome to one and all. I've got just one or two announcements as we move into our worship service. Um, one of our ushers, or two of our ushers maybe, back in the back, uh, Dave Landis and Ken Moyer, they've got a paper for our closing hymn, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Some of you maybe downloaded it on your phone. It was sent out uh, with our insights earlier in the week. And if you need a copy of that, you can kind of raise your hand or jump up and down or do some jumping jacks or something like that uh, to get their attention. And that would be wonderful. Otherwise, I think that's it for us right now. It's As I said, it's a beautiful day, and we're so glad that each of you have joined us in worship, and we're so glad that you are joining us in worship as well on the video. And so let us continue now in worship on this beautiful day. Just as the heavens burst forth in praise to God, we celebrate God's abundant and powerful love. Day by day and night by night, God watches over us, loving and healing us. Come, celebrate with joy the love of God. Open our hearts and spirits, Lord, and teach us your ways. Amen. Now, please join me as we open in prayer. Lord God, we have come this day to hear your words of healing love and hope. Enter our hearts and our spirits and teach us to follow you. Give us courage and strength to be your faithful disciples. We pray. Amen. Now, please enjoy our opening song, which is a day-by-day -day medley.
of Psalm 116 verses 1 through 9 is taken from the New Living Translation Bible. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. Because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath. Death wrapped its ropes around me. The terrors of the grave overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. How kind the Lord is. How good he is. So merciful, this God of ours. The Lord protects those of childlike faith. I was facing death and he saved me. Let my soul be at rest again, for the Lord has been good to me. He has saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. And so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. Thank you, Linda, for reading that for us. So I don't know if you noticed or not, but uh, a wonderful uh, musical piece uh, was sung for us, and it connected right with our call to worship, where in the call to worship it talks about day by day, and then what do we have? The day by day uh, medley. So that was uh, doing my heart lots of good, and day by day and with each passing moment, the second part of that medley is an old Swedish hymn. And in Swedish, it's, it's Blotten Dog at Ugen Blicki Sender, of course. And uh, uh, that's one that's going to be sung at my funeral in many, 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 many years. So, uh, but I love it. It's such a, it's such a great, uh, great hymn. And uh, earlier before the service, when uh, Zach and Carla and Lois and Meredith were running through it and practicing it, I, I called my mom and, and uh, walked up and had the phone right next to the speaker and had her listen to it as they were singing that. And she says, Ja, det var bra, in a, a Swedish, yes, that was good. So you, you're not only a blessing to all of us right now, but a blessing to a 85-year-old woman in Chicago. So thank you for that. Our, our uh, gospel text for today is Mark 8, 27 through 38. And as well from the New Living Translation. Jesus and his disciples left Galilee and went up to the vi villages near Caesarea Philippi. As they were walking along, he asked them, who do people say I am? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say that you are one of the prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter replied, you are the Messiah. But Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. Then Jesus began to tell them that the Son of Man must suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the religious law. He would be killed, but three days later he would rise again from the dead. As he talked about this openly with his disciples, Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples and then reprimanded Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Then, calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. 
but if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. As always, may God add a blessing to this, the reading of his holy word. And friends, as always, grace and peace to each of you from our Lord, Savior, and friend, Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> well, Jesus is really good with language and using language to clarify and emphasize his teachings and his message. He's really good at it. And an example is seen in our text for today, especially verses 27 through 29, which I'll read most of right now again. Jesus and his disciples left Galilee and went up to the villages near Caesarea Philippi. As they were walking along, he asked them, who do people, who do people say I am? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and some say that you are one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? Peter, of course it was Peter answering, right? Peter replied, you are the Messiah. Jesus here starts. He asks a general question, and I think he did that to get people's brains working, to get people thinking. Uh, and then he hits them with a specific question. And in doing so, uh, I would uh, imagine that the other disciples, uh, Peter answers, but I would imagine that the other disciples as well, in their minds, begin to think about that question as well. Who do we say that this guy is? Brilliant by Jesus, starting with the general and moving to the specific. Really excellent, I think. Well, if anyone were to ask any of you the question, uh, adapting Jesus' question a little bit, if anyone were to ask any of you this question, who do people say that you are? I'm sure that you would have answers, right? But they might be different uh, than, some, so, than some people might think. The question, who do people say that you are? Now about me, if I ask any of you, some of you might say something like, well, he's a husband, he's a father, he's a pastor. Unfortunately, he's a fan just about of anything from Minnesota, you know, so on and so forth, right? But here's something that I could say about myself that might not be something that makes it onto your list. I didn't like studying science in high school. Hey, I didn't like studying in high school anyway, but I didn't like studying in high school, and in fact, uh, my worst grade that I ever got was in uh, chemistry my junior year of high school. Uh, but now, I actually like reading about scientific stuff. It's when I, I don't have to study about it, but I like reading a bunch of science stuff. For example, this week I read an article titled, How Genetically Similar Are We to Other Life Forms? How, yeah, <laughs> the scoffing begins. <laughs> How genetically similar are we to other life forms? I, I was intrigued. So, you know, I don't know much about genetics, and I don't know if you all know much about genetics. The only thing I remembered about genetics was, I think, from biology uh, in 10th grade, uh, that there was a guy named Mendel. He did some experiments with peas, and uh, he's kind of like the godfather of modern day genetics. Uh, but that's about all I remembered about about uh, g about genetics and stuff. But here's for, this is from the uh, from the article. Of the three billion with a B of the three billion genetic building blocks that make us living things, only a handful are uniquely ours. In fact, despite our differences on the outside, humans are 
99.9% genetically similar to one another. But how like are we to other non-human life forms? Turns out we're a lot more similar than you might think. And so now friends, uh, I want you to take just a moment and turn and look at people sitting next to you. Uh, come on, everybody do it. I'm watching you. I'm doing it too. You're 99.9% .9 similar to those people sitting behind you, beside you, and in front of you. But what about those non-human life forms that the article was talking about? How similar are we to non-human life forms? Chimpanzees. Now, I love the Planet of the Apes movies. The old ones with Charlton Heston, not these newer ones, but the old ones, you know. Uh, get your filthy hands off me, you blank dirty ape, you know, when he says that. I love those uh, old Planet of the Apes movies. But chimps, we are 98.8% uh, genetically the same as chimps. 98.8%. Dogs, 94%. Cats. I'm glad cats are less than dogs. <laughs> cats, 90%. We are 90% the same, similar genetically as cats. How about cows? 80%. 80% genetically the same as cows. Fruit flies? 60%. 60% genetically the same as fruit fly flies. And bananas. We are 60% genetically the same as bananas. That's pretty crazy stuff, right? Wowzer. Now, please, please, please uh, take this with the humor that it's offered, you know, to, to kind of humorously adapt Jesus' question about who do you say that I am and all that stuff. Who do we say that we are? For example, we could say that Tom Blackwell is 98.8% chimp. <laughs> and also, uh, Madeline Zobel right here, we could say that she is 94% the same as a dog, right? Or we could say that I am 60% bananas. <laughs> and, and more than that, apparently, from over here. And I did talk to Madeline and Tom beforehand, so, you know, it was okay. So, and then now, just so that we aren't freaked out by these statistics, uh, from the article again, it's important to note that being genetically similar to something is different than sharing the same DNA. And DNA is really the building block, I think, of, of who we are as people. That's because genes, uh, the part of DNA responsible for making protein, only account for up to 2% of DNA, while the rest of your genome is made up of what scientists call non-coding G, coding, C-O-D-I-N-G, DNA. So maybe that's all just kind of filler. Uh, so while a banana is 60% to uh, genetically similar to humans, only 1.2% of our DNA is shared with bananas. So friends, that's good news. That's good news that we are not really so similar, so close to being a chimp or a dog or a cow or a banana. Well, this was just a little thought exercise I thought we could do this morning, and I hope it helps us think about and ponder the question Jesus asks about who others say that he is, and who do we say that Jesus is? And of course, the corollary questions of who do others say that we are, and who do we, in fact, say that we are as well? Now, remember how I said that Jesus was good with his use of language uh, to get his teaching across. I think he skillfully loops back to the first few verses that we had in verse 34 by saying, if any of you want to be my follower, if that's who you want to say you are, if any of you want to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. Who are you? He's asking. If you say you are my follower, here's what you have to do. Here's what you got to do. 
you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If we give up our own way, if we take up our cross, and if we follow him, we are showing in and by what we think and what we do and what we say that Jesus is the one that we've been waiting for. Peter declared that. The Jews were waiting for the Messiah for thousands of years. Peter declared that Jesus was the Messiah. And for a Jew to declare that, it would mean that he is declaring that the one that he is declaring that about is the one that has come to save all of Israel. Jesus indeed came to save Israel, the Jewish people, and Jesus came to save each one of us, whether we are, as Galatians says, Jew or Greek, slave or free, male and female, Jesus came to save all of us because we are all one in Christ Jesus. An interesting thing for me is this, that even though we are all the same, that in that we follow Jesus, we are all different. In Galatians 3.28, as I mentioned, it says that, you know, we are different. There is our Jew or Greek or slave or free or male and female, but we are one in Christ. Jesus says this. Jesus says that we are to give up our own way to follow him. And our own way isn't giving up or who we are at the core. Giving up our own way is rather this. Giving up our own way is giving up the selfishness and looking out for only number one that we so easily slip into so often. Giving up our own way is turning away from being self-focused to being Jesus-focused. It's moving from, as we say from time to time, it's moving from selfishness to the selflessness exhibited and seen in the life of Jesus. Now, I want you to take a few moments again now to just look around at the people that are sitting next to you. You did that just a little bit ago, but do it again. Uh, and this might be a little bit awkward for those of you who are watching on the video. Maybe there's only one person next to you, so go ahead and stare at that person for a moment. But uh, take a look at people around you once again. Uh, we, again, we've got more people here outside this morning than you probably have when you're sitting at home watching the video. Now, as you looked around and you saw the people around you, I hope you noticed that we are not all alike. We're, we're not all identical, are we? Some of us are older, and some of us are younger. Some have blonde hair, black hair, graying hair. Some of us have glasses or no glasses. We are female or male. We have different shades of skin color. None of us are exact replicas of the person sitting next to us or exact replicas of anyone that is here and genetically we can remember that that is true as well we humans aren't a hundred percent genetically alike 99.9% hey, .9 is pretty close but that's not a hundred percent so what does this mean for us as we try to follow Jesus, what does it mean that we really are different from each other, but the same as well, in that we each, like Peter, declare that we trust Jesus with our lives and that we want to follow God in Christ? Well, one thing I think that it means is this, is that uh, in the life of the church, as we live out our faith, none of us will serve or do the exact same thing or the exact same ministry as someone else, as anybody else will do. There are myriad ministries in the church, whether it's singing or playing or videoing or coming to church to wet back rooms or roll up carpets or or 
put up bulletin boards or read scripture or call people or visit people or, or bring food to people, drive people to the airport, serve as ushers, uh, work on the finance team, teach little children. There are myriad and myriad of ministries in the church for each of us. But I've observed this sometimes in the years of ministry that I've been in, that sometimes people get down on themselves because they are doing this for the life and ministry of the church, while other people they notice are doing that in and for the life and ministry of the church. And then sometimes people feel down or they feel uh, get down on themselves, they feel bad about themselves because they are doing this and they are not doing that. As hard as it might be, friends, as we serve together, as we do ministry in the church, avoid that type of comparison. It is not healthy at all. Bloom where you're planted. Remember, Scripture says that God gives each of us, the Holy Spirit gives each of us a gift or a talent or an ability to be used in the building up of the church. And you remember all that talk about some people are like an eye, some people are like an ear, some people are like a leg. We all work together to be the body of Christ. Bloom where you're planted. Serve where you think and understand God has called and equipped you to serve. Live out your faith using the gifts and talents and abilities that God has given you because God has given them uniquely to you. Who do you say that you are? You are the person that God created you to be and to serve him in ways that only you can do it. Who do you say that Jesus is? He is the one that we serve. And you serve using those unique gifts and talents and abilities that God and the Holy Spirit has only given to you. And friends, I'll tell you this. As we've been going through this COVID, and, you know, hopefully things are going to turn around and we're going to be getting back to a little bit like things are a little bit more normal. We are going to need each and every one of you to be exercising and using those gifts and talents and abilities that God has given you to build up the church, to strengthen the church, to strengthen this church, our church, Christ's covenant church. And so friends, once again, we're not bananas, we're not fruit flies, we're not cows, we're not cats, we're not dogs, and we're not chimps. We are human beings created in God's image to love and serve all people, to strengthen the church, and to worship and bring glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so as unique as you are, and as united as we are as followers of Christ, but again, as unique as you are with those unique gifts that you have, let us declare, not just by words, but by our actions and all that we do, that this is who we are and what we believe. We are unique creations of God, made to love and serve one another, to declare that Jesus is Lord, and to build up and strengthen the church. In doing all of this, friends, let us continue showing and sharing the love of Christ to all people. I know you can do it. Let's continue doing it, honoring God in all that we do. Amen. A little chilly. <laughs> Those of us in the shade, a little chilly. Those of you in the sun, perhaps not so chilly. Before we enter our normal time of prayer, I'm going to um, be praying 
a prayer marking the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. Um, I've abbreviated it a little bit. It is a, a prayer that a covenant pastor wrote and posted on our Facebook ministerium page. And if any of you would like a copy of it, just let me know and I can send it to you. Um, he shared it this week as many of us were writing and asking about things. So let us pray. Lord, for those of us who were old enough to hear the news, we can never forget that day. For those of us born after, we have grown up in the shadow cast by the term 9-11. As citizens of heaven living in America, we pray to you, mighty God. We ask you to meet us in our continuing feelings of grief, fear, vulnerability, and anger. Our pain is not fully healed, not as individuals, not as a nation, and you know this. Every day gives fresh evidence that the world is not the way it should be. September 11th, 2001 was not the first evil, and we mourn that it was not the last. We grieve how much this world has been broken by sin. We even see and know sin in our own hearts, and we confess that we have ignored you and rebelled against you. This is why we needed you to reconcile us to yourself on the cross. You are the master peacemaker. In that light, Lord Jesus, you told us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. This is difficult, but it is in line with the grace that you showed us. So God, we pray for terrorists in the world today. We pray for those in the Taliban and Afghanistan who would oppress and intimidate. Lord, unblind their eyes to the light of the gospel. We believe that even those far away can be brought near to you by Christ's blood and can join us as brothers and sisters in Christ. By the power of your spirit, Make your people fear you and not any other human being. Even so, Lord, protect our brothers and sisters in Christ in Afghanistan from evil people. We remember before you families' griefs and soldiers' wounds. And we lament all that has poured out after that compounds our tragedy. Blood, years, money, illnesses, tears. Lord God, make us trust in you alone. When we feel vulnerable, when we are tempted to trust in our wealth, our comfort, or our might, when we don't know what our next step should be, no matter what promises people should or should not make, May we trust in the name of the Lord our God for the wounds of the past, for the difficulties and trials of the future. Give us faith, hope, and love as we eagerly wait for that day when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes and will heal the nations. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And God, now we continue in prayer as we lift up the rest of our world this world that you have created and have given to us and gifted to us to care for and to steward for and we do confess that we have not stewarded it wisely we confess our own part in that and we ask that you would give us open hearts and minds and bodies to do what we can and to not turn a blind eye, but to turn towards you. God, we lift up areas of violence and political upheaval and natural disaster. We ask for your care and your resourcing. We ask for communities to respond, including our own communities, God. We lift up those who grieve in these areas that are in need of care and resourcing. 
including areas in our own nation with recent disasters. God, we lift up the pandemic again, those suffering from COVID, those recovering, those with long haul COVID, those in the front lines, those who are unable to receive vaccines around the world or in our own nation because they're not available. God, we pray for resourcing. We lift up a friend, friends of Dave and Becky Bennett, Rick McKee and his family. The whole family has COVID, God, but Rick is hospitalized in an ICU and he's taken a turn for the worse and is not doing well. God, be present with Rick and the medical team. Guide them, grant them wisdom. And God, grant all of us wisdom. We are all so tired, so pandemic weary, and we are so tired of trudging through this pandemic. We know it is so far from over in so many ways, but guide us all, God. Open all of our eyes and our hearts to see one another as you see us and see each one of us, God. Lord, we lift up those who are sick with cancer or with other illnesses and whether they're minor aches and pains or major aches and pains or vague situations that are chronic or recent. We lift up losses of jobs and relationships and perhaps crushed dreams. God, we lift up joys and celebrations as well. There is so much going on, God. There is weariness and fatigue, whether pandemic related or other situations. There is so much going on and we offer it to you. And now, God, we take a moment of silence to lift up to you things that are on our hearts and minds. We lift these things up to you now. God, we thank you for hearing our prayers and knowing our prayers and knowing each one of us. We thank you for this breeze that is blowing in and may the breath of your spirit blow through this community, this community of faith, all the communities of faith and God, may your spirit blow through each one of us as well today that we may respond with your spirit's presence in our lives and not just as individuals with whatever DNA and makeup we have. May we be are bananas may be bananas for you god with your spirit flowing through us may we respond with your spirit god and god i also lift up in celebration the wedding celebration today the marriage celebration of marty cressman and haley his fiance as they get married this afternoon we pray for them and for their marriage we thank you for that celebration this afternoon we pray all these things to the powerful name of your son jesus christ who taught each one of us to pray saying our father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is I have decided to follow Jesus. And if hopefully you have a sheet, please hold on to it because it might blow away. Or if you don't have a sheet, hopefully you have it on your digital device.
Thank you for that. Our benediction today is a New Zealand benediction. Australia last week, I think. New Zealand today, who knows where it's going to be next week. Maybe Fiji or Samoa or something. Uh, this is written by uh, Diane Carey Tripp. Friends, you are God's servants gifted with dreams and visions. Upon you rests the grace of God like flames of fire. Love and serve the Lord in the strength of the Spirit. May the peace of Christ be with you. The strong arms of God sustain you. And the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen you in every way. Amen. A few uh, announcements. That's, as always, you received the insights earlier in the week. Maybe it was Friday or Thursday. I don't remember. The days kind of blend together sometimes. But make sure you take a look at a lot of those things in there including the uh, fall gathering which is going to be on October 3rd and watch this da, 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 da. I just happened to have in my hand the sign up sheet for that as you read about that you know we're gonna have worship inside we're gonna come out here and have a time together uh, we're going to have uh, some food, it's going to be catered, and we're really looking forward to that. Uh, but with the catering, we want to be responsible people, and so we don't want to have too little food, but we don't want to have too much food. We want to be just about right. And so it will be a grand and wonderful help for the team that is working on planning that. If you would come, I'm going to bring the pulpit right out here, and if each and every one of you would come, and if you're planning on being here on October 3rd for that, just write your name down. It's not like you're committed to absolutely doing it, but we need to get kind of a ballpark figure on uh, what, what we want to order. And same thing, if you're watching today, and uh, you could email uh, Pastor Kathy or myself or Heidi in the office, we'd love to get that information uh, working and getting taken care of. Also, it is September, so what does that mean? That means that the nominating committee is going to be soon gathering. And so some of you, oh, wow, what did we talk about? I have, de or what did we sing? I have decided to follow Jesus. We talked about serving. Maybe you are thinking about ways that you can serve and build up and strengthen our church. There's always opportunities to serve, and our nominating committee will be moving on some of that stuff pretty soon. Our leadership team meets on Wednesday. We would ask for your prayers for that as we do that. And as Pastor Kathy prayed today, uh, say a little prayer for the wedding uh, today. Just, you know, a prayer of blessing would be great for Marty Crestman and Haley Womenauer. Um, let's see. Linda Bear, was that about good enough for what I, for the announcement for the, for the uh, October 3rd fall gathering? awesome friends hang out go in peace serve the lord if you have some offering there's a plate right up here and remember don't go anywhere here is your first place to go to sign up for that and don't steal my pen <laughs> friends go in peace and serve the lord